This is from your LGBTQ plan, and here's what you write. This is a quote. Freedom of religion is a fundamental right, but it should not be used to discriminate. Do you think religious institutions uh, like colleges, churches, charities, should they lose their tax-exempt status if they oppose same-sex marriage? Yes. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Feels good to be back, back in the studio talking about our usual range of subjects matter, no more Minecraft. That's all behind us now, thankfully. And for those of you not aware, the Heck Off Kami website is now live, so you can go there, buy some epic Heck Off Kami merchandise before it's gone. You can also support the channel by getting a subscription through which you can vote on video ideas, submit your own video ideas, access our list of weekly book recommendations, you get live shows and exclusive content that won't be on YouTube, behind the scenes access, a whole lot of stuff, very cool. And that's the best way to support the channel because YouTube demonetizes all of our videos and so we have built our own platform where we can offer you guys some really cool benefits in exchange for your support. So please go check that out at heckoffkami.com and anyone that gets a membership before November 1st will be automatically entered into a free merchandise giveaway. So go get a membership ASAP. You might win some free Heck Off Kami merch. And already I have to thank a few people for signing up for a high IQ membership and I don't wanna dox them by giving out their full names, but Tyler, Miguel, and David. I hope you guys are watching right now because let me tell you, I can't thank you enough for your support because none of this would be possible without people like you, not only because it costs money, but I wouldn't be motivated without people like you. You guys are patriots. You have my respect and I'm sure the respect of the entire audience as well because we're all fighting for the same reasons here generally. And also I wanna thank everyone who's already bought merchandise Again, I can't tell you how much that means to me, not only because it's like, okay, I can pay my bills now, that's epic, but also just that what we talk about here on the show resonates with you and your beliefs enough for you to want to give your money to support us. That's just, that's really something special. So thank you to all of you as well. But uh, anyways, moving along into the news, there was a CN, you stupid mosquito, I fucking got it. That's why these leftists can't stand me. I'm just too quick. I'm too quick. You're not gonna actually believe I got it. Yeah, no, I caught it in my hand. Big brain. Look at that. Big brain. So there was a CNN town hall last week dedicated to LGBT rights, and of course this resulted in top Democrats calling for restrictions on religious freedom in this country. And so what we're finding out, which by the way, virtually everybody with a functioning brain was able to predict, is that religion in this country cannot coexist with the normalization and the promotion of the LGBT agenda without compromising its position and its convictions, because virtually all of the Abrahamic religions, I mean Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, condemn homosexuality. And you can see this too in different Indian and East Asian religions. And the way it's always worked in this country, and the way it's supposed to work in this country is that if I am practicing a religion that teaches against those behaviors, I am within my rights to refuse service to those people in any capacity so as to disassociate myself from behavior that is sinful in my religion. But now, what we're seeing instead is that not only will you be unable to refuse service to the LGBT community, if you even try, we're gonna ruin your business and ruin your life because you should have just baked the cake, bigot. And all, of course now, it's all come to fruition as a means to the ends of stripping religious liberty from the religious institutions in this country. And so basically what happened at this town hall, amongst a list of alarming things. Especially black trans women. I'm so sorry, I don't wanna take this away from you, but let me tell you something, black trans women are being killed in this country and CNN, you have erased black trans women for the last time. Let me tell you something. Um, as I know you are aware, quick- And next, Secretary Castro, I want to bring in Shay Diamond, a singer-songwriter from Los Angeles. She currently supports Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Shay, what's your question? Um, it's Shia Diamond. Shia Diamond. Put that on record. Okay. <laughs> it's on the record. Thank you. Yes, honey. It's violence to, to misgender or to alter a name of a trans person. So... Let's always get that right first. Is that Democrats such as Cory Booker and Beto O'Rourke said that under their rule, religion would no longer be able to be used to justify discrimination. Beto O'Rourke went as far as to say that institutions that practice this discrimination will lose their tax exempt status. Elizabeth Warren mocked men who support marriage by suggesting that any man who isn't in support of two men or two women getting married will have trouble finding a wife. My Instagram DMs would beg to differ. And then Pete Buttigieg said that when religion is used to harm the LGBT community, it quote, makes God smaller and it's an insult to faith. Yeah, okay, Pete, we'll talk more about you in just a second. But first, we need to address that 
In many of these cases, particularly in the most famous one with the baker in Colorado who refused to bake a gay wedding cake, they aren't actually being discriminated against because of their sexual orientation. For example, in Colorado with Jack Phillips, the gay couple could have bought anything in his shop. No problem, no questions asked. But what he will not do is create a custom cake for their gay ceremony. So he wasn't discriminating against them. He was discriminating against their request. A straight man could have walked into the shop asking for a cake advertising a gender transition party and he would have been turned down. And so what this comes down to is, really, should the state have the power to put a gun to your head and say, you will defy God and you will bake this cake? And the answer to that question has always been no. And it will always be no, regardless of what the left tells you and regardless of what fake Christians like Pete Buttigieg tell you, Pete Buttigieg, a self-identifying Christian that's going to tell you how Christianity teaches us to help the poor and sick, which in his language means expand entitlements and repeal the Hyde Amendment so women can use tax dollars to kill their babies, and then he goes home to his husband. You're not Christian, Pete. You're a false prophet. You have evil working within you. How dare you? How dare you contort the Christian doctrine to suit your progressive agenda? That's not of my direct concern. I'm sure you'll have a great conversation with him about how you managed to interpret the scripture as a green light on sodomy and the murder of children, you wizard. I told, my, I told myself, I'm like, I gotta chill out. You know, these last videos, I've been pushing it, but I, I just, I can't help it, you know, but, um, we were we were warned about people like Pete Buttigieg. We were warned about Christians that seek to redefine Christianity to enable their own pursuit of vice. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Does that sound at all familiar to you? The redefining of truth to suit one's own desires? That is fundamentally what leftism is. They redefine gender to suit their own desires. They redefine human nature and the reality of unequal outcomes as a result to suit their own desire for utopia. This is truly a motif for them. And again, in 2 Peter chapter 2, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Very chilling excerpts indeed, just in time for Halloween, right? And I usually refrain from bringing religion into what I say, but I do so now only because we're talking about religious freedoms and we're talking about a man who was actively campaigning against those freedoms and freedom in general while acting as an ambassador of the founding religion of this country, which is Christianity. And anyone who makes the argument, well, America's not a Christian nation because, oh, look, I found the treaty with Tripoli that says that the government of the United States is not founded on the Christian religion. Oh, look, I found the Virginia statute for religious liberty that says no man should be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship. Oh, look, I found the First Amendment that says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That must mean that America isn't a Christian nation. Yeah, it's like those people have a juvenile understanding of this country's founding as it pertains to the Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the religious beliefs and affiliations of the founding fathers, the traditional and historical religious makeup of the country. Like really all they're doing they're straw manning because when they cite those quotes about the separation of church and state, it's like they're basically just asserting that we're not a theocracy. Like, okay, obviously, but that wasn't the question. The question is whether or not this country is rooted in Christianity. And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. And that's why they've declared war on Christianity. It's not that they're necessarily anti-religion, but they are explicitly anti-Christian. And they're anti-Christian because this nation is a Christian nation. They weren't talking about Muslims. That's not why those white liberals were cheering. Those were cheers against Christians because you have to understand that leftism and progressivism are inherently anti-Christian because they seek to uproot the fundamental principles of this country and replace them with their destructive worldview that masquerades as utopia. Whereas conservatives, whether or not you identify as Christian or even believe in a God, ultimately what we're trying to conserve are the values that exist because of the Christian roots of our society. I mean, why do you think that only 32% of white liberals believe in a God, whereas 72% of white conservatives believe in a God? And most of the atheist conservatives with whom I've spoken, they acknowledge this. They usually tell me something to the effect of, oh yeah, you know, I don't really believe in a God, but that doesn't mean I have to ignore the effects of Christianity, which is a perfectly fair statement to make. But you have to acknowledge that man is a religious animal. All throughout history, throughout all cultures, you will find religion. And so you can try to remove the man from God, but you will never remove God from the man. That's why as we watch atheism rise in this country, we see these environmentalist movements that in effect act as religious movements, as we've previously discussed. We see a culture that worships celebrities, dedicates dozens of hours each week to keeping themselves updated on the lives of these people. Or most importantly, you note the overwhelming correlation between atheism and authoritarian leftism. Because if atheism were simply a rejection of the existence of a God, you would reasonably 
typically expected to be about evenly distributed across the political spectrum, but it isn't. So it's not that they don't worship a God, it's just that their God is the state and they will put all their trust and faith in this God in exchange for promises of a utopian society. But the scary thing about sacrificing your rights and your freedoms in worship of the state is that if you don't obey it, you get a bullet in your head. And my source for that is human history. Um, yeah. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, give it a big comment with your thoughts, and of course, give it a big subscribe to the channel. And you can also now give it a big, go to heckoffkami.com. You can support us by buying a membership, by buying merchandise. If you bought merchandise, send me pictures. I would like to see that. I would like to see us all spreading anti-communist rhetoric in public, in, in our schools, at work, whatever. I would very much like to see that. It would make my day. It would motivate me to keep fighting alongside you. So thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America. There we go. First one was kind of bad.